Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for our Chamber Skills Series presentation, writing compelling press releases, how to get your story covered. This session will be recorded and available to you later this week on the Chamber website if you need to go back and rewatch it or if you'd like to share with your friends. Um, and we're able to provide the session free of charge to our Chamber map members, thanks to our um, the generosity of our sponsor, Lakes Pier College. So speaking today on behalf of Lakes Pier College is Daniel Fanning, the Vice President of Institutional Advancement and External Relations. So Dan, thanks for being here. Hey, Chris, thanks for having us. I'll be brief. I just want to say on behalf of Lakes Pier College, thank you and the staff at the Chamber for putting this on. You guys always do such a great job. And we're just proud to be a sponsor of these. These are great community educational act opportunities. And that's what we're all about at LSC is just community and education. So this is a natural fit for us. Uh, Nicole, Cole, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. I see a lot of familiar names and faces in this group. So I know we've got a lot of talented, impressive people listening in that have their own skills as well. So this is just a really great opportunity and we're proud to be part of it. So thanks for having us. Thanks, Dan. Well, I, I mimic that. I, we have a really great group today. So speaking on, or I'm delighted to introduce our speaker today, Nikki Karnowski. Nikki and her husband, Michael, own Metamorphosis Coaching, Consulting, and Training together. So thank you for presenting today, Nikki, and take it away. Well, thank you for having me, and thanks everyone for being here today during your lunch hour. It's a beautiful day out there. <laughs> so um, just a little bit about us. People often ask, um, you know, why do you share about the press releases? You know, we, we work with teams, helping them to get along better in their workplace, coming in, improving the environment in the workplace. But what we notice when we work with clients, a lot of times they wanted, you know, help getting events covered. And my background is in broadcast news and TV. So I was a producer um, and reporter. And then um, recently it's kind of fun. Let's come full circle from my days back in the news to the last two years, I've been able to do um, an Eye on Lifestyle segment. So that airs every Monday, 6.15 a.m. I, I like to call it uh, news you can use in life, family, and business. So some of the things will be from my experience, some from colleagues and people in the news. And I'll share with those with you today. Um, as always, I like this to be interactive. So I know we have a lot of talented people on here with marketing experience. If there's little nuggets that you want to add to what I have to say, I'd love for you to um, add that and share because I think that's how we all learn, you know, by really um, sharing our, our golden nuggets and wisdom. So, um, yeah, the things we're going to cover today, um, things to think about before you write your press release. So, you know, we often focus on the press release, but sometimes if we can take some time and plan things out about the actual event, that's going to really align things to get covered uh, better key components for uh, your press release, how to make your press release stand out, uh, some do's and don'ts, some examples of, um, I just have a few examples of press releases that have gotten media coverage, and then just some strategic things to think about when you're sending your, your press release out. So number one, <laughs> think like a news reporter. If you can get in the mindset of how a news person is thinking, that's gonna really help you when you're thinking about planning your event. Um, learning um, how news people look at these things, at, at the stories, at the events, what you want covered can make just a big, um, a big difference in your story getting covered or not getting covered. Well, so first of all, I always like to ask, you know, what is a story? Is it actually newsworthy? In journalism, I mean, there's, there's some variance in this, but usually about seven keys that will make it newsworthy. So I, I, I have a few down there, but I'm going to share the seven. Um, timeliness, you know, new news or something relevant is always going to be better. Proximity, most people are going to want to hear local news, you know, uh, wow, a local um, a toxic waste dump was, was discovered. I know that's not so nice, but you know, that, that's news over a toxic waste dump in Russia. So local news is always going to drive um, that. What is the impact or the consequence or significance um, of the information? Will this story change our lives, make life better, um, impact people in some way? Um, I, a good kind of test for this is to, just to ask, um, so what? Like, okay, when you think about your story, so what? Do that test and it, does that kind of, um, you know, measure up your thing? Um, novelty or rarity, is this an unusual story? you know, or event? Is it something that's like, wow, that's, that's so unique? Um, 
conflict. Often we see that, you know, this is our more breaking news, you know, murders, things that, uh, uh, weather events, those kinds of things. So anything like that is always going to be top news, of course. And then human interest. And I think this is where a lot of our events, stories and things we want covered can fall under, you know, stories where we identify with others or, you know, we're sharing things that can help benefit others. And then prominence, of course, if there's important people involved, elected officials, um, you know, new or big things that are impacting business in the community, that's always going to be, you know, the driver of news. I kind of summed that up before, you know, when you're thinking of your events, is it timely? Um, is it relevant to where it impacts, you know, many people? Or uh, we'll talk about some tie-ins, how you can maybe help that to, uh, uh, to do that. Anyways, and then community interest or impact. Uh, what is that? Is Why should we care? Or who is being impacted by this? And then, of course, there's always a the feel-good stories. You know, those are always kind of nice at the end of the news segment, at the uh, as the news closes, we always need some kind of uplifting thing to end on. So is, is this story just a great all around uh, feel good story? The next thing, if it's not, uh, if you're looking and saying, well, you know, I have a ribbon cutting and I'm an entrepreneur, it's for five people. Maybe that's not so, so newsworthy, but is there some way that we can make it newsworthy? That's what I always like to ask. Is there a hook you could use or an interesting tie-in? Now, I always tell people you want to be authentic. I don't want, you know, somebody to pick something to do just to get their story covered. But whenever you can have that human element of maybe something you're doing to benefit the community or a neighborhood um, happening where you're doing a drive or something like this where there's a tie-in with your business, that can help that. Once again, I think you have to be genuine about that and not just look to do something, you know, to get the coverage. But one of the great things in synergy that can happen when you have something you're really passionate about and it, you can align that with your event, that's a wonderful way to get that covered and it benefits you know, everyone. Another thing sometimes people want to think about, look at the national or local days. It's really easy to do. Google, uh, get on Google and put national days in. That'll come up. They have national days, national weeks, national months. Um, you know, some of the things I, I, I just looked up, for example, just to give you some examples on May 1st, it's National Fitness Day. So if you have a fitness uh, facility, um, corporate wellness center opening, anything related to health, you could kind of use that as a pool in your media release to say, you know, as part of National Fitness Day, we're doing this. Just, you know, it's not just saying that for sure your story is going to get covered, but it gives it just a little bit more meat to it that something is actually happening on that day. Um, uh, oh, one of the things I thought, I, I just had some fun. I saw some people in the audience. I, I hope that was okay. I took some liberty uh, and some, some of you I know, but um, one of the things, a hook or interesting tie-in, you know, I was thinking Minnesota Power has this great um, Falcon cam that they have. So, you know, some fun little news release, maybe you want to release something to tell about this. Um, they have peregrines, little baby peregrines. Very cute. I looked this up last night. It could be new baby alert from Minnesota Power. That would make me, you know, kind of say what, you know, um, Minnesota Power peregrines steal the show on Falcon Camp. Something fun like that. You know, that would probably be something that it would at least get 30 seconds at the end of the segment um, because it's fun and people like that kind of feel good story. The national or local days. I just had fun, you know, um, maybe Ecumen Lakeshore gives elderly a leg up with their new fitness facility opening, all part of National Fitness Day to help el elderly stay engaged and physically fit. So just little things like that, where you can, it, it's not a lot of effort, you know, look it up on Google those days, see what could align with um, your event or your story that's not too far of a stretch. You know, once again, we want it to be authentic, but those can be just kind of um, fun things to do. I, I looked again, May 1st was also, also National Play Outside Day. So let's think about that, you know, outdoor school events, um, playground launches. These could all be tied into some of those national days and often that will just give it a little bit more meat for media to pick up on. They, they'll like things like that, that they can also have, you know, other tie-ins sometimes too. May 4th was National Teacher Appreciation Day. I'm not saying Glen Sheen needs to do it. Glen Sheen has, I love their marketing and promotion. It's fabulous. But, you know, it could be Glen Sheen is giving teachers a treat today, you know, a free ticket to tour. So all those kind of tie-ins can just be very easy ways to give yourself that little edge to get uh, things covered. You get, you get the picture with that. Um, the next thing, is it a help or benefit to the community or large, 
larger group or you know specific community group whenever you can kind of show what that benefit is that's really helpful or how how you're going to help um, does it impact the area the people um, the city uh, twin parts trailer trash i don't know if you've ever seen he does a fabulous job um, we've worked with bernard and he's fine with me sharing that but they do just a great job their their values are really community so i, I know you'll see them all over picking up trash helping nonprofits. whenever you can tie in you know your events and, and coverage with your passion and with your mission, vision, and values, it's that's just a great way to authentically, um, you know, get your story covered. And it has an appeal because it's helping a lot of people. You know, when when you hear, "Hey, if you have trash in your neighborhood, we'll come pick it up for free," that's that's great. Like I'm sure all of us could say, "Yeah, I know some trash in my neighborhood." So all those kinds of things are things that you can think about. The next thing, uh, timing is everything. So strategically planning kind of the date of your event. Now, obviously, sometimes you can't help this. If this is an anniversary, if this is, you know, a specific day you already have planned, that's fine. But when you can, you might want to think, you know, about some of these things. Um, avoiding major holidays, uh, other big news days like election day. You know, if you have something when it's a crazy election, probably not going to get covered if it's a lighter news story unless it's in proximity to something already be co being covered. So um, then thinking about the timing of the year, this is another way to make your event relevant. So I think we all kind of know those seasonal ebbs and flows. Um, but you know, January, things like new habits, resolution, fitness, you know, February, love, Valentine's Day, whenever you can kind of connect to the month to whatever your event is, it just gives it once again, um, you know, a little more leverage. Um, yeah, I just compiled before we get into kind of the mechanics of writing a press release and what you want to include. I just um, took things that I know took some things from people at different stations and, and these were kind of their top tips. So if you don't get anything else out of today, these might be the next few slides, something that you would want to write down. So, um, you know, locally and really most news stations, because it's all set up the same, you know, how, how things run mo most of the time across the nation, doesn't matter uh, where you are, it kind of all runs the same. So TV news people prefer events usually between 10 and three. Um, that's generally because of the way the news, you know, schedule is. A lot of times you have news at five or six. So if you think in terms of that, if you want your story covered, probably having something at four is real hard. Now. Of course, there are times that's just when the event is. That's okay. A lot of times someone can come out and, and still cover that later. Maybe it goes on the 11 o'clock news, the next morning news. But if you really wanna think in cycles of news, you know, having it between 10 and three, probably gonna guarantee it gets on the six, maybe the 11 o'clock news too. Always having good visuals. Um, you know, that's so important. TV is, it, it's a visual media medium. Um, so you, you wanna have good visuals and the more of those that you can provide the opportunity for, the better you know, your chance to get covered. Um, one to three speakers are fine. So if you have people that you wanna talk about the event, that's good. Anything after that, you know, it's kind of confusing. Uh, once again, stories that will get covered, stories that feature a unique person, situation or event. Sending a picture. This is a big one. Um, I just was checking in with my friend. Just was I was reviewing some things this morning. She said, "You know, I can't stress that enough. When people send some materials with that, that can show us like like this is a home run because often it's short staffed in the newsroom. Often they have one chance to get the story. So when you're sending like materials that show and it's like, oh, this is going to be good, that can help um, too. And then some one thing I'm not sure. Like now that um, the way things are today in media, I think we're getting more used to like." Oh, you could actually share pictures. So if you have your event and you have great pictures, you can often submit those with your story and it can still get covered if they didn't have um, time to get out, you know, and cover the story for the day. Cause whatever happened, breaking news, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later, but just keep that in mind. It's not all lost. If you have somebody there, it doesn't even have to be professional, you know, photographer now, I mean, our iPhones or whatever phone you have, take pretty good pictures, take, take great pictures and, um, you know, include details and you can submit that. And many times they're happy to have that content, which is, you know, way different than many, many years ago when I was, uh, you know, in the newsroom, it was all like, you know, professionally done or it just wasn't done. So 
that, that's really great, I think, today. Other insights to help. I, I always, this is something I've always shared with our clients. I'm always like, you know what? Mondays are great because generally that's not a good news day. You know, everybody wants to do things Thursday and Friday, busy, busy, busy. So, um, you know, sometimes if you can't do your event on Monday, because if it's a slow news day, you're definitely going to uh, get that coverage. Remember the timing though, and, you know, do things earlier in the day for that. Um, another just little tip. I'll have some of those tips on the slides, as you can see as I just talked about, sending the pictures and information from events or your weekend event, where um, things are also kind of hard um, to find content is on the weekends. So you have a great chance of getting coverage, um, you know, on the weekend, especially if you can submit some things yourself. Other um, slower news times, a week before and after Thanksgiving and Christmas, so that can maybe be a time that you, um, you know, strategically plan something and also the month of December. So just some slower news times that, that it might work for you um, to do. Once again, I don't think we plan our events around there. It has to be what works for us, what's authentic, what's happening in the business, what, you know, our story is happening. But some of these guidelines, if it works for you, it's a great way just to um, increase your chance of getting coverage. So now we'll get kind of into the press release, you know, the, the things that you need to have in there. And of course you need to have the facts. We want all the facts in there. We want it accurate. And, and you want the um, copy to be compelling too. So this I love. What I just suggest for people if they're doing it on their own is to follow a template. This one is wonderful. Yeah, our chamber will give this to you. We're actually gonna, I talked to um, Chris today. We're gonna send this out to everybody after. So um, you will get this, but it's fabulous. If you're new to uh, writing, I just think this is a really easy um, uh, template to follow. So of course you're gonna start at the top. You're gonna put for immediate release. That's gonna be in all caps and that's bolded. Let me go to the next one so you can see better. That'll be all caps and uh, I'm sorry, not bolded. It'll be in all caps. And then the contact info. I don't know that people have faxes anymore. So you can probably eliminate that, you know, tighten that up a bit. And then your headline, your headline is always going to be bolded and um, all caps. And then as you can see, this just walks you through it. You put the city. So I'd put Duluth, Minnesota, the date that this is happening. And then the first paragraph is, that's gonna be what we want, you know, to be the most compelling that drives like, do I want to go to this? Do we wanna cover this? So you want something exciting in that first kind of paragraph. The second paragraph, and this walks you right through it. I love it, you know, why should the reader care? Why is this, why is this relevant? Um, maybe a quote in here. This is a great, uh, you know, place to put some facts or maybe some harder things that could drive uh, your event or your story home, you know, one in three people will experience this. We're doing X, you know, um, did you know 80% of people and whatever that is, you know, this is where you might share that there. Um, that third paragraph, you're just kind of summing things up, um, adding any further details. And then the final paragraph, I just usually use that as a, you know, uh, interviews are, uh, available or whatever else that is, keep it short. Ideally they're one page, you know, sometimes if you have to, you can do more, but one page is great. You wanna put the number sign at the bottom that just says it's done and they know it's one page. So once again, we'll send this out to you and it's fabulous. I, I think the way to get better with writing, you know, press releases it is really um, just, just practice, you know, writing them, practicing, and uh, that's how we get better at anything. So. so how can we make that, you know, our press release stand out? Well, once again, a great quote, you know, sharing. I, I put in the bottom there a little tip. You can Google 20 examples of great quotes for your press release ideas. Now these are different types of quotes, whether it's inspirational, whether it's factual, different things that could get you, um, you know, the juices flowing and that creativity to um, put things, you know, in there that might wow, uh, you know, we can, if anybody has things that they want to brainstorm a little or, or talk about or specifics, we, we could talk those out. But, you know, look that up and kind of think of your specific event and what would work, what would really draw people in. Um, also, like I said, um, I kind of shared that before, just any stats, facts, or anything that would ignite curiosity 
and caused me to say, wow, I didn't know that, or I want to know more, you know, that's, that's what um, kind of helps these to get covered. Whoops, let's go back here. Um, other ways to make that stand out, a fabulous and compelling headline. I think that headline is probably the most important thing, you know, that you can spend time on. Um, and this is something I, I'm going to go into the mechanics a little, or uh, kind of an outline of, of how, to, how to do this process. But I think this is something I often write the release and then I'll go back and hone the headline and maybe look at it a day or two and then go back to it and just really think, um, you know, what would compel you to come? What, what is fun? You know, I, I, I love fun headlines and things that could stand out. You know, a tip below if I have, uh, get the bones of your release accurate, um, hashed out, and then brainstorm, you know, the headline and ways to make even your copy within that press release, you know, more appealing. I like to have a couple different eyes on it, you know, have somebody else look at it, let it sit a day and come back to it. Cause you often see things that you thought were so like, you think like it's fabulous when you're writing on, then you're like, oh, that's horrible <laughs> you, when you come back to it. So it gets better, you know, if you have time, allow yourself some time to do that um, and go through the process. So just a little, uh, review of steps. You know, number one, you're going to gather your information. Brainstorm about the date. Brainstorm about your story. You know, if you have time to plan, think about some of those elements and maybe you don't pick all. I mean, don't let it paralyze you to put all those things on there and like, oh, it's so much to think about. Just, just start. I always encourage people just start because you know what, you're going to learn even if it's even if it's a little bit of a failure and it doesn't get covered, you know there could be many reasons for that. But but just start and do it. Don't get um, overwhelmed. Pick one or two things that really speak to you. And I'd say if you had to just you know do two, it's it's that um, you know the news release is neat and one page, and that your headline is great. And I guess that that would be three. I was going to say accurate information. It's important all that information's on there. So just the review of steps. You're gonna gather that information after you brainstorm the ideas, how you're gonna make this a little bit more newsworthy if it's not already. Um, you're gonna use that press release template, unless you're just good at it yourself and you have your own way. But I, I really like the um, template the chamber uh, gives out because it, it's very easy to use. And, and do a rough draft. So that's the very first step. Just get it out all on paper, rough draft. And then that's where the second step comes in, really honing your message. So, you know, as I said, if you can have another set of eyes, review it, look for accuracy, times, dates. I can't tell you how many times when you're, you're working on it, you know, I'm sure we all have examples in our work. It's, you're working on it so close. Everything looks great. Dates all look good, um, but sometimes they're off. I mean, I, we, I was working on this with a client and we both looked at it and right before we were ready to send, I'm like, oh my gosh, the date is wrong. So make sure you have a few sets of eyes on that because our eyes, I think sometimes make it look right to us, but it's always good to have somebody else proofread that. Um, you know, add the final touches. Um, once again, making that title compelling. We're gonna, I'm gonna share some releases and just um, some of those that we uh, have used. Um, put it on le letterhead. So you always want it on your company letterhead or um, at the minimum use the logo. Or if it's a branded event, you know, use the branding in there. You know, sometimes people have press uh, press kits. That's great if you have a big event. You're doing a whole press kit. Wonderful, you know, great visuals in there. Great information you want to include in those things. And then for the final draft, you just want to check it, check it, <laughs> and recheck it. So. Then um, af after that's done, you know, you're going to send that release out and ideally about one week before your event. So the Duluth Chamber, once again, a wonderful resource for this. I, I mean, we have a fabulous team. I just think Chris and all of, all of our, the Duluth Chamber team, you can send your press release over to them and they will make sure that it gets out to all the media outlets. I mean, that's a fabulous service. You know, it, it makes it easy for you. It builds also the credibility because when it's coming from the chamber, it's a little bit more, you know, um, credibility versus just somebody emailing. I mean, all the things that get emailed when it comes into the news station will get, you know, logged and recorded, but there's something, you know, just a little bit more level to that, unless you know someone personally there that um, will, will um, kind of stick when it comes from the chamber. So um, the chamber also has that media list that they're willing to share with you if you want to 
um, send those out directly. I always say, let, um, I have the chamber send the things out usually about a week, five days to a week ahead of time. And then I'll always do it myself about one day before, just as a heads up, even though I know that it's likely there, even though I know it's probably logged in their system, it's just a great reminder. And sometimes when something's coming in, that that's you know what what's seen. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So top of mind is always good, and you know that's absolutely appropriate. As I was talking to some of my friends at this station, like to to send that again, you know, a day or two before. So um, one tip I just wanted to say: just make sure that where you're. I'm sure everyone on here will be kind about that, but you know, lack of planning shouldn't constitute uh, an emergency for the chamber. Like I need this out in an hour, make sure that you plan ahead. You know, that's the best. So there's not stress, you know, it's hard if, you know, like Friday, I need this to go out within the hour, try to plan ahead and give that to them um, in a fair amount of time. You know, I try, if I wanted to go out Friday, give it to them Monday or Tuesday, say, Hey, I'd like this to be sent out Friday. So, you know, just being polite of some of those things. So I'm going to pause just for a second and see if so far what we've covered, if there's any questions um, before we go uh, to the next little part here. Does anyone have any questions or things that you'd like to share that you could add to this? Can you help me to see the uh, chat, Chris? Yeah. Nikki, we have a question from Heather asking who the contact at the chamber would be to email the press release. I can answer that for sure. It's um, it's our general inquiry line, which is inquiry, I-N-Q-U-I-R-Y, at DuluthChamber.com. Um, that's going to be the direct source for getting your press releases out, but certainly if you can't find that, um, I'm going to email everyone following this presentation with those that information, and you can always send it to me if you have questions. So. Um, yes, please do send it. And thank you, Nikki. I, we love sending press releases and I second that it's really nice to have that additional touch. So you're welcome and encouraged to route these yourselves. Absolutely. Of course. Um, if you allow us the opportunity to route it on your behalf of, as members, we're happy to do so. And that just kind of doubles the exposure, um, and provides that additional credibility. So thanks for mentioning that Nikki. Yeah, you bet. I don't see any other questions. Okay, we'll just keep, we'll keep moving on. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome to push, publish your questions in the chat at any time throughout and we'll just go ahead and I can read it for Nikki um, and kind of answer them as we go. So you're welcome to do that as well. Yeah, I'm gonna do the review. I was gonna have people kind of shout out, but if people are eating and I don't want to, they oh, don't perfect. have to. If, if anybody is unmuted, feel free to um, uh, fill this in or, or shout out the answer, but just uh, things to do, a little review. Print your release on company letterhead. At minimum, you're gonna include your logo. <laughs> so if anyone wants to answer those, feel free. I don't need to answer those myself, but I will if everyone's just enjoying lunch. Um, you know, the words for immediate release should appear in all, that would be all caps, in the upper left-hand margin of the page. Um, if it's not for immediate release, then, you know, we want to write for release on and then put the, the date that you want that released on. Once again, our headline should be compelling, centered, written in all caps, and bolded. So just little style things. Uh, and once, like I said, once you've done a few, it gets natural. You pull that template. It's like, oh, yeah, you, you start to remember that, um, you know, right away. Hey, Nikki, um, I have a question. Yes. Oh. Do you have any suggestions for a subject line? Oh yeah, I wouldn't put press release. I'd put something, um, you know, like this is gonna be great or happening Thursday, or you don't wanna miss this. You know, something something up there, cause uh, you know, press release, it's probably just gonna get tuned out. Like, yep, send to the assignment desk, file it. So writing something in the subject line. Yeah, Chris, what do you usually write on yours? Mine'll be different depending on what it is or the, the client that, uh, we actually, we format it and we say for immediate release and then colon and then the title. And we do that with everyone. But if there's another or better way that we should be doing that as a chamber, then I'd love no, to. No, I think that's great. I think that's a, a great way, um, you know, to do that. So I think okay. it works. And that's probably um, very clear to, you know, to put in the title. So, yep, yeah, I, I would say probably do that the first um, 
first way. And then maybe, you know, with your follow-up, you could have a different subject line. I just Thank know you. sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, having the press release, you don't want to always just put right up there. So, so things you want to avoid. Of course, I think we would all know that this is, we want to avoid typos, but I, you'd be surprised how many people submit press releases that have a lot of typos. So, you know, spell check. <laughs> spell check is our friend. <laughs> and um, make sure all the details are, are on there. This is actually a real deal breaker and it happens a lot. You wouldn't be surprised. Like, so picture this, you're a reporter, you come in, it's, it's staff low, maybe it's just a reporter and the photographer and you get a press release, but it has like the date and there's two things on there. It says something about downtown, but it also has the headquarters. It's not clear where it's happening. Well, now they have to call and now they have to figure it out, but it's a weekend. So they can't get a hold of anybody because the person on the contact list works Monday through Friday. <laughs> so um, think about those, you know, things have all the facts in there and make it really clear and easy to understand. Make sure that contact person, you know, is available, that they're going to be available during the event. Not that it's just somebody who was in the office during the week. You want that person on the contact, like they'll be able to get a call because many times, you know, our, our news um, media will call to say, hey, we're thinking about coming to this event. Will there be somebody I can talk to? Now, not often, sometimes they'll just pop by, but you know, you want to be able to answer that phone and say, yes, you know, if you want your event covered. So make sure whoever is that contact, it's not somebody who is maybe heading it up, but won't necessarily be at the, you know, event, if that makes sense. You know, sometimes you have someone in the office that planned it, but then somebody else is doing you know, on the boots, so, uh, so to speak. So whatever that is, make sure the contact um, is who will be there. Uh, avoid industry terminology or buzzwords. You know, we wanna keep it simple. I, I think really in news, it's, it's um, simplifying things so people can understand them and, and make them appealing to, you know, the, ma the mass to understand. Um, if there is something that you have to cover, I have one um, press release example, kind of sharing that where it's like, oh, what is that? And we kind of defined what that, what that was in there. So if you have to use it, because that's what the story's about, then just make sure you have an explanation. Otherwise people are like, what is this? <laughs> so also, you know, don't hound people. I think that's, pretty uh, obvious, you know, it's fine to send that follow-up press release. If it's something where you are um, counting on media, where it's some like big event, maybe at Lake Superior College or something like that, and you need confirmed coverage, because this is more of a, uh, you know, media event, then you do want to call. But just as a general story, if it's ribbon cutting, something like that, probably, you know, not going to call. And um, that's just kind of rule to think about. So the other thing I, I always say, don't put your eggs all in one basket. Remember there's other marketing venues, you know, in our area, um, Perfect Day Duluth. This was amazing to me. Um, uh, some, some of these, like the reader, like uh, one of the coat drives that we helped with, um, so many people saw this at this. So don't discount these um, uh, different things in our area that really work to share if it's event-based, you know, it might be a different story, but I'm talking more event-based things. Make sure you list them in all these places the chamber Facebook, the chamber weekly emails. If it's a really big event, you know, sometimes people don't know, but you can do uh, billboards, you know, seasonally or for the event. So um, just remember there are other, uh, you know, options for getting your event covered out there and getting the word out. So right now, um, is, is there any questions up to this point so far? Anything in the chat, Chris? Nothing in the chat right now. Okay, I'd love a little interaction on, on this if people are willing, just anything they see that's kind of fun or that stands out to them. So these are just some examples of press releases that um, got their, you know, their story got covered. And you can see if anything stands out. Anybody wanna share? Okay, I'll just kind of share on this. Well, you know, as you can see, Kind of a fun logo. This is, a, they, they branded, you know, ice cream. Who doesn't like ice cream? That makes it fun. Nice little slogan. Ice cream should be cold. Your neighbor should not be. Okay, the, the, this, you know, that appeals to me. Then as I read down, you, you see the facts are there where this is going to take place. And, um, you know, you see the businesses involved down below. And then you read, you know, the idea to help kids with a drive like this came from a 10-year-old child 
When business owners heard her heart, they knew they could bring this idea alive to help the community. You know, that's kind of that tug on the heartstrings. That's a human element. Like, wow, a 10 year old had this idea. Business owners are making it happen. You know, this, this um, event, you know, got covered and had great turnout and they ended up handing out lots of coats to area schools and that. So just kind of a fun event. Once again, you notice the immediate release is there, the uh, headline and the title is bolded. And then down at the bottom, the number signs just noting like that was the end. We switched the, um, this a little bit. Sometimes that contact information is in the top. Once again, as long as it's on there, you know, I like to follow the format, but it can be done that way too. This was the second year of that uh, clothing drive and some of that got cut off to put it up here, but Duluth small business owners rallied to keep kids warm this winter. So Duluth business owners, keeping kids warm, that's kind of that community angle. We're, we're helping the human element, you know, pulling that in. And then this was just very simple and to the point. One day, three locations, thousands impacted. Don't have to say a lot, that kind of says it all. So I think when we can make the point, we don't have to share in a million words and paragraphs. I'm always like less words is better. If we can get our point across in less words and it still has the impact, that's great. And then, um, you know, kind of use that slogan that they had from last year. And that um, also actually got covered all three stations both years. So that's awesome. This is um, Twin Ports Trailer Trash. Free tree pickup and a treat, thanks to one community-minded business. So, um, you know, shared about the dates. When there's several dates, we, we just went ahead and, um, you know, put Wednesday and Thursday, because I think when there's multiple dates, it can get confusing. Is this Tuesday? Is this Thursday? Make it really clear. Make it easy. Um, you know, highlight or you might bold. This is free. This is going to be free to the community. So this is a community service. It's a great story because you can get your tree picked up for free. That's, you know, likely to get covered because that's a great service. They're offering that, you know, for the Twin Ports community. So that already has an appeal. And then they're going to give a swag bag. And so that was just kind of highlighted below. So, um, you know, things to think about when you're writing your press release. Once again, notice once we don't get caught up in all the little things, like, did I do all this right? You know, you notice on the contact information, it was just simplified. Here's the name, here's the number, here's the email. And that's fine. You know, like I said, I don't know how many people are using faxes anymore. You don't need all of that, just what is vital and make sure that, you know, the facts are there. This is uh, Static Clean. Static Clean Duluth helps nonprofits confront coronavirus. Little alliteration there. <laughs> um, anyways, it, this appeals, what, what, what would you say? This is also the community, you know, nonprofits. We're helping nonprofits want to get the word out there. This wasn't um, an event per se, but it was just, you know, a story about helping in the community. So once again, the news picked this up because, wow, they're giving this, helping this um, with this service for nonprofits and giving away, you know, free service each month. So whenever you can, you know, use things like that, that benefits our community and that helps, that just increases the likelihood of things getting covered. And then this last one, I'll just share. Um, the only female NUCA doctor in the Northland opens new office. Now, who knows what NUCA is? Not very many people. So you'll notice down below, um, of course, we have our all the for immediate release, contact information, bolded headline, our Duluth, Minnesota opening with the with the um, date, you know, all the standard things are in there. But down below, NUCA is a little known yet highly effective corrective procedure that is gentle and safe form of chiropractic care with a focus on long lasting results. So we kind of say what that is. Otherwise, I would be like, you know, if, if you're a news person and they didn't know, I'd be like, what is this? Why would I cover it? Um, one of the appeal, you know, we tried to, um, you put, okay, only female NUCA doctor in the area that could, you know, appeal to some. So just a few samples, um, any questions up to this point? Anything in the chat, Chris? Nothing in the chat. This is fantastic. Thanks, Nikki. Oh yeah. You bet. So um, after you, uh, we've shown you some examples, we've kind of gone over the mechanics, kind of thinking about even before crafting the release, thinking about dates and, you know, that's event-based. Sometimes when it's stories, we're thinking of different things and 
Um, some of this might appeal more to events, but regardless, a few days before your event, whether it's story, event, or other thing that you want covered, you can resend your press release out as we talked about. Um, follow up, as we said, with a phone call, only probably if it's you know some big media coverage thing, like it's some event at the airport, um, like Superior College, where you're having an actual press conference. Yeah, we want to make sure that, that they're coming. But if it's just, you know, ribbon cutting, I don't want to say just, those, those are important, you know, ribbon cuttings, things like that. We just send that follow up press release and that's enough. So um, one of the biggest things, like I said, make it easy for the news. And I know this is review, but have the details that, that you would be surprised, like how many releases come in. And that's just like, where is this? Wait, there's not even a number here to contact someone. So have the details on um, you know that sheet for people to be able to know. It should be so easy if I read it, I could just go to the event because you've told me where it is, when it is, and who's there and how it's happening. You know, just think of that. We learned it in grade school, right? Who, what, where, when, why, how, have that all on there. It's it's a very simple back to the basics. And you know, with that little press release, I should be able to just show up your event to cover it. So um just review, making sure your phone is on, leading up to the, you know, that's a real bummer if you've done all this work, you've planned, you've got the press release out, and then somebody else's name is on the press release, and well, we were going to stop by, but it's 45 minutes, so we're not, this This is how they, they think in the newsroom, so that's what I say when you're not sure, get in that mindset, like, hmm, what would they be thinking? If your event is 30 or 45 minutes away, maybe it's an awesome event, and that doesn't mean it won't be, get covered, but if someone can't get you on the line, probably they're not going to waste that valuable resource to go all the way to your event if I can't get a confirmation that there's going to be somebody there to talk to. So just think about those little elements. And then of course, you know, always be kind. Thank the media for, um, you know, coming. If you have food, they love food. <laughs> so what we've covered so far, things to think about before you write your release, maybe tying it into a community uh, venture. Um, a community effort or some kind of a thing you're fundraising for or doing good for or ways it's going to impact our community, you know, using some of those dates, the national dates that could, um, you know, play in, you know, National Fitness Day, uh, National Accounting Day, whatever those are, looking up some of those tie-ins that you could have or other tie-ins that you think of, you know, really, if you sit down and start brainstorming this with your team, you can probably think of really unique things that, that could make your event or story appealing. You know, you want the key components in your press release, as we said, you know, that template you'll do right every time if you um, do that. We talked about how to make your press release stand out. That's really with that wonderful title, compelling title, and then that first paragraph and just making it clean. You know, when you look at it, does it look nice or does it look like one big one big paragraph, you know, we kind of want them in nice bite-sized chunks. So I could glance with my eye and I can see, oh, okay, this is where it's happening. Oh, that sounds interesting. You know, you want it in bite-sized chunks that you can easily read. We went over some of those do's and don'ts. Um, we looked at a few press releases that got coverage and then just talked about, you know, strategically sending out your release one week ahead, possibly if you want to follow up, you know, a, a day before. And once you send that, generally it's there, it's logged in by the assignment editor or whoever, it goes into a main system by the date. So any reporter, any assignment editor can see that by the date. But like I said, it's always good to be top of mind. And I think it doesn't hurt just to share that, you know, day of or day before. So, you know, somebody else is, is glancing at that. So common reasons why stories don't get covered. Number one, they're, they're just not newsworthy. You know, if, if I have a, a business and, um, you know, I have two employees and I have a ribbon cutting, well, that's, that's great. It's exciting. We all celebrate business. I love small business and connecting people, but not necessarily, you know, a news story. So really have to think about how to make that event newsworthy. Poorly written press release. And, um, you know, we, we've gone over that reviewed. Unclear, lack of details, typos, or the message just fails to get across. It's not compelling. That's a number two, you know, reason that stories don't get covered. And many, you know, somebody will pick it up, be like, oh, this looks great. Oh, shoot. There's, there's like, I don't even know where this is. There's not even a number. So it gets, it gets thrown away. So, and then this is the last one that I think sometimes we just fail to like 
think about, but really it's, I call it a day in the life of news. So, you know, think about this once again, getting back to thinking like a reporter, thinking about a news person, you come into the newsroom, you know, your assignment editor um, might have a list. There's five stories going on. And then you have maybe two things you've pulled. Meanwhile, you know, um, Mayor Larson decides to have an emergency press conference and then there's flooding downtown. Well, guess what? <laughs> All of that great planning or that event is, is out the window. So I just think keeping in mind, you know, how that works. Another thing, scheduling. Many times um, news people will not want to cover your event, but that's proximity. They Maybe, like I said, it's an hour away. It's hard for them. Um, so these are all things that they're, they're stuck with uh, scheduling, not only scheduling when they come in, you know, um, if they're scheduled to go out on a story, are things close by? They're always trying to look, could we, could we go by, could we go by another event and get 30 seconds video and share this? And what is, what is near? So, you know, scheduling and staffing, those things make a difference. So we talked about that when things are, you know, maybe light in staffing or your event is later or it's on the weekend you can always share to them great photos, great content. Once again, you wanna get those facts in there. This happened today, compelling headline about it, um, you know, and, and just some great story um, pieces. And then if you're doing that and submitting your story, I also have, you can give me a quick call about this if you have any questions, include your name because maybe, you know, reporters get really great uh, about writing. If you, if you send some bullet points, I could probably write, um, you know, a story in, not very long, 20 second story about this, you know, oh, this happened today. It was great. Thousands were there or hundreds were there. But, um, you know, they might have one little one little question or story. So make sure that you um, include, you know, how to get a hold of you even on that when you're submitting. But it's just a great kind of last ditch effort if it didn't get covered because of staffing, because of scheduling, because of breaking news. You, it's still not all lost, <laughs> you know, take that extra effort, submit your story and, um, you know, hope for the best. So I just like to take questions if anybody has um, any things that come up about getting your story covered or anything from today's presentation. You can unmute or put it in chat. I'm not seeing any questions right now in the chat, Nikki, but I do want to mention that. Can I make a comment? This oh, is yes, Karen please. Anderson from WLSSD. Yes. Uh, the you know and those were very nice press releases that you shared but having um, spent a lot of time in this industry I would also say that really when you're sending a news release the audience is the reporter and so don't forget that you shouldn't be writing that to the general public it's uncommon for any reporter to take specifically what you've written in your news release and uh, publish it verbatim or read it verbatim on air or, or, or any kind of broadcast. So I guess <clears throat> just recommending that it's, it's not, we're happy to invite you to, it's such and such a business is inviting residents to, or community, you know, do you just have to yes. make sure you write yes. it way? Yes, absolutely. Um, having spent time, a lot of time in a, um, a newspaper newsroom, um, I would tell you that a lot of those times you have to find, I, I would just reemphasize the need to have that connection to the community because the, um, the reporter really wants, I mean, that's what their job is. We're trying to give um, my audience, my readers, my viewers, my listeners, um, the information that they need and that we think is important. And so connecting it to why that's important to the community to know is really key, but keeping it in the way that this is really your audience in a news release is a newsroom and a reporter and not the general public. Because many times, as we said, I wonder why they don't just buy an ad because <laughs> it sounds like a marketing or an advertising piece and it's just a different um, style of writing. I would just, yes. You know. Yeah, that's a good point. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. Yep. And I didn't show all the ones, uh, today, but I would absolutely agree on that. Yes. Thank you. Nikki, I do have a question from Megan. Yeah. yeah. Are the terms 
news release, media release, and press release interchangeable, or do they mean different things? And is there a preference for the media? I, I mean, as far as like people I've talked with and from my days, like that's pretty much the same. I mean, you might have a, a media press release packet or something like that, but press release, media release uh, to me, um, yeah, is pretty much the same. Yeah. Is that what you found too, Chris? When you, yeah. yeah. It's mm -hmm. all I'm pretty much there. accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyone else? And we did see one from Christy too. Um, she's asking if we have the emails to send the press releases to. Yes, um, Christy, I will send that to everyone when I follow up by email. I will include this presentation, um, the press release template that Nikki um, showed you and also our media list. Um, that way you can route them yourself. And uh, like I said, we're happy to send them as well. So we will include that. That's great. And I guess just any any helpful thing that you would take away today or apply or use. One more question, Nikki. Yeah. Shauna would like to know what's the best way to send photos if there isn't a space to submit them with the release or if there is only one only space for one. Like how do you submit photos? Oh, well, I would probably attach them uh, you know, separately on that email and maybe see, see attached, you know, photos some, like a note with that or, you know, within the email copy. I guess it depends. Are you um, you know, on the news release, that is a little tricky. You probably don't want to, you know, muddy that up maybe one or two. It depends if you're like branding it and it's very clear. Um, I, I know they've been pretty open, uh, different stations when we I've worked with them, just to include those, you know, in the email and, and make that clear. So, yeah. Have you had any of that too, Chris, when you send any? Um, sometimes I find when you include it in the press release, it can really ruin your formatting. So yeah. I would agree that probably attaching it is best. Yeah. And, and with the stories, you know, if, if you have... Um, you're kind of submitting uh, some information for story, uh, you know, coverage and sharing uh, for the community about your event and, and you're sending that to them, you can just, you know, attach those um, in an email specifically to the person. Because probably by then, if you're submitting the story and they, they want that story, you know, you have that, that contact. So yeah, that's how it's usually worked for us. So I have a question for you too, actually. Yeah. yeah. We recommend that press releases are sent in a Word document, so it's they're easy to copy and paste. Is there a preferred method for media, or is that really just <laughs> just our preference? No, um, I think that is. And let me check just to make sure on that. Sure. If anybody else knows of the, I, I had that written. It is. We also, and when I say we, I'm referring to the chamber and our press release services. Yeah. Um, we copy and paste it in the body of the email and we attach it. So we do both. So just in the event, whoever is checking that email that day or what have you can. I like that. I like that yeah. practice because it makes it easy, but then you can pull the complete thing up too. And yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I've always gone by the word um, that standard too. So yep. Okay, That's perfect. Always, yeah. Excellent, thank you. Well, that's that's really all I had today. If anybody liked that presentation, you can like those CBS news pages or our Facebook page. That's always appreciated. Thank you. And then just if, if people, yeah, if you have additional information, like I said, we primarily deal with teams and helping people get along, but this has just been something that has you know been nice from my background that we've been able to help clients that we work with to to do to help them with media coverage and it's 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 always fun so yeah well Nikki this has been super helpful really informative I'm seeing a lot of messages of thanks and that was really useful on the chat so we really appreciate it um, like I said I will follow up with everyone over email with the presentation, the press release template and our media list, as well as um, Nikki's contact. So if you needed to follow up with her or had any additional questions, you're welcome to connect with her that way. So if there's no other additional questions, then we'll, we'll go ahead and close it out. Thanks so much. Have a great yeah. day. Thanks, Nikki, you too. It's beautiful out. Yes, it's lovely. Get out there for a walk. <laughs> yeah, agreed. <laughs>